to the Anything Better podcast, your favorite hour of the week with your hosts, Paul Verzi, Bill Burr. We have our amazing producer extraordinaire, the freak, Andrew Themlis. And uh, today we are sitting with uh, our guest, only maybe our third or fourth guest, making his second appearance on the show, Anything Better, Mr. Joe Bartnick. Joe B. B, what's up, baby? Good to have <laughs> what's you back. up, fellas? Oh, well, this is I, episode number 40. So we do with every episode, we talk about the greatest players to wear that number. So this week, episode 40, Paul. I, this is one I remember. Gail Sayers of, the, uh, of the, the Chicago Bears. I, what did he score? Six touchdowns, seven touchdowns in one game. Unfortunately, got a knee injury, cutting his career short. Also, honorable mention, Mike Haynes of the New England Patriots slash Los Angeles Raiders, who shut down Joe Theismann. Uh, all his wide receivers. Uh, in, the in, clean Lester Hayes. Lester Hayes was, I thought he was 37. No, but he, he didn't have all the stick him. Lester wore all the stick him. Mike Haynes was like a, like a oh, model. Oh, the clean Lester Hayes. Okay, I didn't get Sorry to cut you off there. That's all right. 40's a hard one. I got two others here. Number 40, Henrik Zetterberg. I don't know what team. That seems like The Red Wings. Yeah, the Red Captain Wings. Captain of the Red Wings. He wore 40 on the Red Wings? Yeah. Oh, I, I didn't picture that. Uh, and in the NBA, Sean Kemp. Number 40. Oh, the Rain Man. That's how many kids he has. I was going to say, the amount of baby mamas that guy had. (laughs) He had to get out of fucking uh, Seattle after that. Poor bastard. It was Uh, raining kids. It's raining kids. Hallelujah. Can't beat Gail Sayers, though. That's that's an easy one. Gail Sayers, yeah. I mean, I had to think for half a second uh, on that one. I'm trying to think. uh, Oh, wait. Was uh, Pat Tillman, was he 40? 39, oh, we missed him last week. All right. I thought he was 40. I thought he was 40-something. 40, 40 or 41. 40. Uh, 40. Rest of- he was 40. 40. We got it. Just before somebody said, oh, my God. How could you not fucking forget that? We didn't. We didn't. Um, anyways, Joey B, everybody. <laughs> the man, the myth, the legend, the host of the Puck Off uh, podcast with Frazier Smith. Um Joe, it's you know you're always a happy guy. You're I always, am a happy guy. You're always in a good mood. Try but to you, be. You are especially in a good mood because it's it's you got to be because it's hockey season. It is hockey season. It hasn't quite officially started in Pittsburgh since we've been on. Everyone any good's been on the IR, but oh. yeah, it's officially started. They, they didn't call you up from Hershey. <laughs> Wilkes Bear, Hershey's the uh, Philly team. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you know, and now there's scandals. Like you know, there, people are trying to bring down hockey. Bring down the Catholic Church. Bring down politicians. Don't. Bring down the Blackhawks, the Penguins. Come oh, on. yeah. What are they saying? They said there was a little... Yeah, uh, we, I don't want to get into it. A little tomfoolery over there. Yeah, you know, a little Paterno situation. But now they're going oh. after the Penguins. No, on that, Sandusky situation. Uh, well, well, no. Well, yeah, exactly. There was a Sandusky. And but then, then there was go. a, hey, we're going for the Stanley Cup oh, here. No. Let's not uh, <laughs> let's not make Statues any waves. Statues coming <laughs> down in, Pitts, in, uh, in, in Chicago. Oh, my God. And then the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins, uh, the, one of the coaches there did something, and they fired him. But that's not enough for these, you know, people that shouldn't be in the locker room anyway that now are hockey reporters. Oh, they want to get rid of the franchise. Well, I mean, I think a lot of reporters, you know, didn't get picked in gym class. So it goes beyond that. I think then they, they want to, like, destroy the but whole league. Bill, there's people like me that just want to talk about hockey, want to listen to hockey. And you can, and now that there's kind of regular reporters that are, like, looking for blood, it's like, you're not going to have a job if they shut down the NHL. So why can't we just talk about the NHL, right, Andrew? I'm sorry to get off on that. No, it's all right. Here, no, but yeah, the, other but, thing, the other thing, too, is if, you, if, you, if enough time goes by and you dig long enough, I'm sure you're going to find a lot of more disgusting stories like the Sandusky and this fuck. You know what I was thinking about the other day? I, when I was a little kid, I was in a doctor's office, and I remember this guy, he fucking put what looked like a condom on his finger, and he fucking put it in my ass, right? I was little. I was little. <laughs> And I'm thinking to myself, and I remember like, I remember like when I was laying there, being like, oh, this. When I thought I came here for a dental cleaning. (laughs) 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 I didn't know that was a root canal. Okay, (sighs) no, uh, and and, (laughs) but and like you know, I remember telling my mom because I was like elementary school and I remember going, he put like his finger in my butt and I was like, it kind of felt, and my mom was just like, oh, you know, he's probably like checking. But now I'm thinking like, was that okay? 
So I'm, you know, I, I don't know, you know. But well, that what were you there the for? Guy. What? What were you there for? Sore throat. I was. <laughs> <laughs> No, it was like an old. Hey, I went left. Thing. I should have gone right. You know, wrong hole. Really went <laughs> wrong hole. Yeah. Uh. No, it was like a. It was just like an overall physical, and it. I definitely remember it being like quick. So I don't think it was anything, but it just makes me think like, what the fuck? He was thorough, Paul. The man was thorough. Your mom got ten bucks off on the copay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you know, Paul, I always wondered why such a happy guy like yourself became a comedian. And now now I think I know. That's all it takes. You know, one condom index yeah. finger up your ass. And next thing you know, you listen. Come into the stage, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> all of no, it's probably it's probably perfectly innocent. But what I'm saying is that guy who did it with those Olympians and the guy that did it with the Blackhawks. And I'm sure that that's happened so much. That Dude, it like, happened to more... Sugar Ray Leonard. What's that? It happened to Sugar Ray Leonard. At the, Olympi- at the Olympics. That's that's a ballsy predator taking on Sugar Ray Leonard. I mean, I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's, it's one thing to get a, you it's, know, a I gymnast, think it's but. great that these these things are coming out. People can talk about them rather than carrying it around because uh, why should you carry it? The other person should carry it. So, uh, you know, as much as I, I don't like, you know, all this sensationalized shit, you can't have that going on. No. I think you can have copy, uh, you can have, you know, good hockey and not people getting diddled by coaches or fucking whatever. Janitors sweeping up, I don't know, whatever, the, I, whoever the fuck I it was. I completely agree. I'm just saying there is a crime, there is a criminal. Now let's move on. That's all. Let's not just keep digging. Can we get back to hockey? That's all I'm saying. I understand. Because I say that, you know, when they, when they do the whole, like, you know... Uh, <laughs> You know, you're watching a football game, and then all of a sudden there's some guy with a sad look on his face. By the way, my uncle died of cancer. Yeah. It's like, great. Well, I'm not working on the research, so I can't, I can't do anything about that. I'm watching sports to escape yeah. the misery of the news. Thank you for just – why don't I just put on fucking CNN or Fox yeah, right exactly. now? Yeah, exactly. Susie Colbert me. needed something to say this week. So I'm sure everyone in the stadium knew somebody with cancer. Like, right? Who doesn't know somebody who died of cancer? Who doesn't know you should get checked out? Who doesn't know all of these things? And I'm, I always suspect the NFL of figuring out a way to make money where you don't think there's any way to make money. Yeah. So I, I bet like cancer research people have to pay money to have these people hold these signs up to bum everybody out. The same way when they used to show the troops, you're like, oh, look at this patriotic shit. It's like, no, that guy is uh, a member of the United States Army, and the United States Army just paid for a commercial to have that guy stand up and everybody clap. So I never... Um, but the dudes themselves, I love, and women. When you're, It's the best. You're in a hockey game, and you're like, we want to salute... You know, Jack, so and so's third oh, degree. Oh no, no! Start. What's like, going on in the, the surface? Best. That's the best. They have their wife and their kid there. They got a free game jersey. Dude, the and- best is drinking Heffenreffers in a '72 Ford LTD that your dad's father owns, driving to the fucking Boston Garden. That, that's the way it was. And there was fucking troops there, and they never introduced them, and everybody was fucking ripped. That's the best. That's what I feel. No, they were the troops those days were outside. They didn't get the tickets. Yeah, they didn't know. They, didn't. they, they didn't. were begging every, for change. Every, every, they were the old school homeless people. <laughs> Remember the other homeless people were real Vietnam vets? Dude. Not like, I lost the war on drugs. Give me a dollar. They were actual Vietnam vets. No, veterans, vet veterans now they're, are homeless. That's why when I go by those 10 cities, I always make sure I try to, you know, I, you know, if I got something, I try to give something. You give something. your camo pants? I, I give, like, you know, a lot of merch that I didn't like from other podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> your bad MGM gear? <laughs> <laughs> Your bad hey, hey, MGM hoodie. The dress in front of Staples Center. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always like when there's like, uh, if I get, you know, sometimes I, I do a gig and somebody will give me like a, a sports thing from a rival from of my team, so I don't have it. But the best is when there it's a rival of a LA team, and then I give it to a homeless guy because I think you know everybody's going to see it because he's outside, he's walking down the street, you know. <laughs> yeah, he's Some outside. Some Celtics gear. I don't know. Why, 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 why would we do this? Paul, how's your week going? Bad. We're out here out west. You know, everything's this great time of year. You know, it's not as hot. The fires have done. Yeah, you know, seeing you two sitting there and uh, Themless, the last time we were together, we were eating a burger in sunny Pasadena, drinking sodas. And I, that's the day I looked at you and I said, guess what I'm doing today? Fucking nothing. I'm doing nothing today. I got nothing that's to when do you- today. Nothing to do. Um, I can't wait to be out there with you guys. But no, man, my week is going better. I'm having a better week. My wife and I aren't fighting, which is great. 
Um, you know, uh, everything is going good. I'm relaxed. I'm getting some rest. You know, what, what can you do? Fucking, I'm happy. Here's what you do. I was going to go to the city, but no, you go. Uh, it's too early. Is that a reference? It was going to be. That's okay. Cut that out, Andrew. <laughs> no, I like it. I, I, like, I was just like, I have no idea. No, I was going to do what yeah. I did with my dogs. You know, when my dogs were getting along, it's like, I'll tell you what I was going to do. I was going to go by myself to the beach. You know what, Ruby? You come with me. We're going to go to the beach. You'll see Brian and Marcy. You're going to play in the ocean. And we're going to go home. You're going to play nice. Because that's it. That's the way it's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. You gotta go home because you gotta go home. Yeah, this th- th- this is no good. Oh, okay. I, I didn't. Get, Sorry, okay. I, I get. Know, the, I get. I get. It's not early. I should have understood the. Uh... Was it wasn't that good of a Pauly imitation? Let's, let's let's be honest. I've had better Pauly imitations. I've had better Goodfellas references. Oh, what the hell did my my wife say to me? We were at some place. We were in a cigar bar that my wife loves. I'm not going to say what it is, but there's a cigar bar my wife loves in L.A. She, you know, she's working on a show idea, so she writes and I smoke a stick. Dude, it's, we, we had like one of the most perfect nights the other night where we went, we hung out, we had a sitter. I was smoking a stick. She was working on a show. And then in the end, she was like, hey, you want to go to Carney's and get a hot dog? And I was like, yeah. And the guy gave me a shorty and she let me smoke it in her car. I had it hanging out the window. Oh. Dude, it was like the perfect night. So anyways, we're in the cigar bar. And she said, hey, if this thing ever goes out of business, she goes, you got to buy this place. You got to buy this cigar bar. And I put the cigar in my mouth. I'm like, whoa, well, what, 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 what do I know about the uh, cigar <laughs> it's, it's, it's the exact, yeah, the Pauly thing. What, I got to win. What do I know about the restaurant business? And he talks with the cigar in his mouth. And I had to do it like nine times. And she's looking at me, not getting it. I'm like, oh, you fucking, you literally set me up for the line in the movie. So I, I've had the, I had the same moment. I just met a woman that never saw Goodfellas. I'm like, I don't think I can talk to you anymore. Or I can introduce you to the greatest dark comedy of the last 50 no, years. No, because she goes, I'll watch Goodfellas if you go to church with me. I said, well, I guess you'll never see Goodfellas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, you got to go to church. That's 20 minutes of material. Dude, if the guy's up special. there preaching and you don't agree with it, then the Bartnick laugh <laughs> in the back of the church. Dude, if Bartnick walked into church, books would start setting on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Last time I went to church was New, Year, New Year's Eve, <laughs> Christmas Eve, <laughs> with my mom and all the kids, all the grandkids, everyone. We went midnight mass. My, my uh, mom is sitting there with three grandchildren laying on her. It's like in Washington, D.C., downtown. It's a thousand-seat church, at least. It is packed. It's like the Stones were playing the church, right? Right. This guy talked for an hour, and I looked around. Not one single human being was looking at him and making contact with him. I was offended, not as a Catholic, but as a comedian. Right. And he would stay on stage yelling, like, wrap it up. Yeah. He's your closer. He was going Jesus for that. was born. Boom. Good night. Yeah. <laughs> Merry, Merry fucking Christmas. It's the easiest night of the year for him. Well, he was probably so psyched to be in front of a big crowd, like they finally had a draw. <laughs> he was trying all of his jokes. He's doing yeah, it in front of this hour. You. Those guys are going to like <laughs> Hey, the 700 Club's here tonight. I got to have a good show. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> Keep it moving. Bring up the Deacon. Let's get out of here. Oh, that's still fucking worse. That place, the organs, is going like this with a phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Altar boys waving the candle. Wrap it up. Dude, going to church and the priest stinks. It's just, it's, it's, oh, you just, I, I go, every once in a while I go with my mother-in-law and she goes to a good church and with COVID you have to be like outside and stuff. And, uh, you know, he's actually good. He's got something to say, he gets in, he gets out. I remember back, I used to do, I, I had like a, I think for the first, like, I don't know how many years, like 25 years of my life, I never miss mass. I had a Cal Ripken streak. I never fucking miss mass. And I don't know, somewhere along the line. Oh, that's right. They started. I found out they raped children, and then I just I started. The, <laughs> every time the basket came by, I'm like, "Is this money going against like the children, the defense?" I'm I'm paying for lawyers for this shit, so I kind of stopped going. But I remember uh, there was a couple people. Oh, I remember. Yeah, yeah. Like the the church I went to, there was just there was always like one guy that was the star, the headliner. You hope you got him, and then there was a couple <laughs> yeah. of feature acts. And then there was just the fucking, the cunt priest, where he would just give you shit that nobody showed up, and it would just go on and on and on. Dude, I remember everybody would be we would be doing like this, would be like lean lean forward, just like kind of looking down at their shoes. 
And then the hot deacon would come every year to change up the hot deacon to get everybody motivated. All the single moms show up for the hot deacon. Oh, we had one of those guys, and he had the ski trip. Oh, Everybody yeah. would go on the ski trip, and this guy would crush it on the slopes and hopefully got laid. Yeah. Somebody in a loveless marriage gave the guy a little something. No, dude, you're, uh, you're right about like a headliner, because I, I remember when my grandmother passed away, rest her soul, we went to that mass at St. John's in Yonkers. This guy was so good, dude. I was okay with death. Like I was just like me and my wife were going, everything's going to be OK. Yeah. Like everything's going to I it was this guy was crushing it. He kept it like he kept it simple, but said the important stuff. What Joe was saying before he hit the bullet points, made you feel good. And you were like, yeah, this guy, this guy should be closed in 10 o'clock Saturday nights. Why That's can't it. they do He's, that? I, yeah, Why do they I always got to they always got to make you like my religion. They always got to fucking scare the shit out of you that you you know, you're not doing enough. You're never doing enough. Yeah, my my it wife just, has a good religion. It's not the Catholic, it's like the Catholic light. What is that? One of the ones that isn't Catholic. I don't know. They're all the ones that are Jesus but not Catholic. You know, all the underlings, you know, like also receiving votes. One yeah, of those religions. My mother They're was, all chill. Yeah, but my mother was Protestant. I just wish my dad went the other way, but we all went over the Catholic side. So, Jesus, but I, I went to a couple of those with her, just Easter. You, know, you want to bring your kid like Easter, Christmas, but my kids stopped going. But I, every now and then I'll go on Christmas in my neighborhood. There's like a bunch of churches. So I went to one. I just get a couple good vibes for 20 minutes, and then I don't have to stay for the whole thing. <laughs> Me and my wife. A couple of innings. One. Yeah, a couple of innings. I, like, I leave in the fifth inning. Yeah, it's like being baseball. After my second beer and my second dog, it's like I start counting outs. Like, how many more do we got to go? I didn't even know the World Series went on. The whole thing went without me even knowing. It was. Like I the watched election. the whole thing. It was like the election. I watched last night, too. Good for them. By the way, shout out to the Atlanta Braves for winning that game. Good for them, man, because if they lost last night, it would have been rough. And then also, you know, it's great for Atlanta because, Jesus Christ, I mean, with what the Falcons did in the Super Bowl and the amount of times the Braves won their division throughout the 90s and yeah. into the 2000s and all they ever got was one World Series out of it. Dude, they won this year. They won in 95, and the last time before that was the Milwaukee Braves in 57 with Hammer and Hank Aaron. Um, dude, by the way, when 44 comes up, Hank Aaron and, and Reggie Jackson. I mean, that's, Reggie. That's, that's like that, – yeah, that's like – that's like the, the most powerful number in in, 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 in baseball other than and Jackie Coffee Robinson. Medicine. Yeah. <laughs> Formula 44. Um, <laughs> I didn't know you were going with that. Um, dude, to... it was it, they, they have, what won it for the Braves was their bullpen. Their bullpen yeah. just, just shut um, Houston down. Houston the whole year they were scoring all of those runs. And I, the only reason why I watched the series, because I usually don't watch them, was because they were saying that like it was bad – a ratings nightmare that Houston and Atlanta were in it. And I, you know, it just makes me sad. It's like, well, if the MLB ran it like the NFL, it doesn't matter what cities, you know, everybody's fucking watching. So I sat and I, uh, I watched it, dude. And I thought when, when the Astros just put it on them in game five, I just, it just looked like what they did to the Red Sox. Like we, we, we did all right for two games and then they put it put us on put it on us one game and they just never looked back. It was just like the fucking Lakers fast break in the eighties. So I just thought that the Braves looked dejected. They're from Atlanta. It, what Atlanta does to their sports fans, I, I would say it on my podcast, another thing, yet another thing I was wrong about this year in sports. I other than, I thought they weren't I coming back. Atlanta, I thought Atlanta would I thought Atlanta would bounce back just because of Freddie Freeman, man. That kid, Freddie Freeman, is anything you could ever want in a baseball player. He gets the numbers. He keeps his fucking mouth shut. He's a great dude. He's clutch. Uh, reigning MVP. You would never know it. He's just a fucking. He's the. He's the fucking man, dude. And uh, you know who's that cool on, on Houston? Al, uh, Al, Altuve. That fucking guy. That guy can play. Because I know there's all the bullshit with the trash can. That fucking guy can play. I don't. Oh I, no, no, no. Altuve. Altuve is great. But watching um, Hank Aaron's grandson. Hank Aaron's grandson went out and he had his phone and he was like pointing to the fireworks and he was just going like, he, you could tell he was just like happy and like, you know, so that, that was really cool to see. I don't feel bad for Atlanta losing ever. Why? Because other than not having an ocean, which hurts. They got the Gulf though. Not Atlanta. Atlanta's in the middle of the, there's no ocean in Atlanta. Or well, Gulf. there's no ocean in Ken, but you know, where I grew no, up, it's still I, a fucking Yeah, but what geez. I'm saying is the women down there are so hot. They don't have to care about sports. 
<laughs> if you live in Atlanta, the cool. smorgasbord of women is so amazing. Yeah. And sports are like the last thing. I wouldn't even think about sports if That's I That's why nobody Atlanta. shows up. You know, in the There's so many hot chicks. Why would you yeah. even go to a game? <laughs> Wait a minute. I mean, Joe, really, I per capita, other, other than like, you know, other than the whore cities of like New York and LA and Vegas, what uh, in Miami, other than the whore cities, I think uh, Atlanta, would you say there's only three whore cities? Vegas, well, New York, there's just so many hot, ch- I, New York chicks are the fucking hottest. New York has. What, hot. what makes to you what makes a whore city? Where hot chicks go to, 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 to land a rich guy or to be a model or to whatever. Okay, so that's so the, not a dream in your world. They're whores. I understand to go there to get a rich guy makes you a whore, but if you know if, if that's their dream, I'm getting out of my fucking town. Okay, I I I I throw you, you, the, that's I throw a broad the whore that's a broad around. whore brush. Yeah, I don't mean. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't. I'm sorry, Gloria Steinem. I was just saying. You know, I call. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. Broads. Well, you know what I mean. Miami. So you're saying that women that aren't good enough to be models but think they are. Okay, those ones. Okay, I get it. But they, New York, L.A., Vegas, Miami. Those are the four that just attract hot chicks. They're like a, you know, it's like dog food to a dog. Right. Other than those four cities, I think the best pound for pound hot chick city is Atlanta. Where normal gr- women who've born, raised, live. I think it's Atlanta. I, I got a, I got a, a runner-up. To contest that, I would say Arizona and Phoenix. But are those college chicks around the world? I don't know. And I'll say Phoenix, my buddy went to college. And, 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 and I'll they, say they, and I'll say Phoenix has has the white chicks and Latinos, which I love. Atlanta's got some hot black chicks too. They got everybody. Atlanta's you got <laughs> Atlanta's got the whole pool They got everybody. Atlanta's got the whole pool and they got like and they're like rich people too. There, Atlanta. It's not like Phoenix is like they're all great gold diggers or they're broke. There's not like people working. In, uh, Atlanta's know, there's a, real a lot city. of money in Arizona, dude. Those are retired Republicans. I know, but the women are the goal. I'm talking about women. You're, you're gonna, you're gonna, all that money down there, dude. They're there. If you go down, what's that fucking strip? We used to. I used to do the uh, the Tempe Improv, right? And then the late great Dan Mayer would take you out on that strip where all the fucking rich whores were fucking and Scott's walking down. around. Yeah. yeah, dude. I mean, that was, I was impressed. That was impressive to me. I. I I'm 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 up for putting at number five. But like, Joe, Joe, I gotta I gotta correct you. Dude, this Joe, is like the top thing. twenty, the college, Joe, the beginning, the API no, no, poll. <laughs> Joe goes, Joe goes, yeah, man. I gotta be honest, dude. Like, who cares about? If I was in Atlanta, I wouldn't care about sports. Joe was in a fucking bar in a, in. <laughs> Joe was. I've never seen anything like this. He was <laughs> in a packed nightclub '70s theme. The dance floor was packed with people dancing to Saturday Night Fever. There's women are running around. Everyone's getting drinks, and Joe is sitting at the fucking thing watching a, a Penguins playoff game in a smoky nightclub. <laughs> yeah. Hey, some Penguins. I wasn't looking, watching the Atlanta Flames and Jim Craig. Some Penguins. I'm, I, I, it's the Penguins. It's the only thing I care about. You know, I'm, I'm gonna watch a Penguin playoff game. I think I got more chicks that night because they couldn't believe I wasn't into them. Yeah, Remember that? they were coming around like fly. They were like bees on honey. Like this fucking Dago doesn't give a shit about me. They he's probably- watching. He's watching a one inch screen. I could barely hear and I could barely see Crosby. They probably thought you were a GM of the Penguins or something. This guy's a scout. I can get to Sid the kid if I fucking blow this guy here. In an Atlanta Hooters, wherever the hell you're at. Um, we were no, in the fun dude, bar. Going, Atlanta, Atlanta, say, Atlanta's great. The cigar shop, everything's great. I love Atlanta. Atlanta's I would great. move there if cigar. they had a real, if you didn't have to drive most of the places and it was on the beach. That's the only drawback is the traffic is insane. Absolutely insane. And no beach. Beach is, ocean's. Oh, that's what you're saying. You need, you need a beach close by. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, like, okay. that's what not, you meant. Okay, I didn't understand. I thought I thought you weren't giving them credit for having waterfront. I was talking Georgia. You were talking Atlanta. I get it. I get it. That's a long. Yeah. What is that? Like a fucking three hour drive down to the Redneck Riviera. I know. Verzi will do it in two and a half. I'm telling you, it's a two and a half hours, yeah. door to door. From my from my door to the ocean's two and a half. I don't care if there's a cop behind me and I'm hauling Bartnick's drugs. It's two and a half hours. No bridge, no bridges. No significant bridges. And if you left it up to him, you'd end up in Chattanooga before you're like, Paul, where are you going? We're in Tennessee. What? Yeah. This is tough for a stick. This is tough for a stick. All right, well, they got lakes up here, you know. Chattanooga, they got a good, yeah. good sports bar. 
Ah, right, man, what can I say? I'm bad. I'm bad with it. I'm bad with it. I'm bad with directions, dude. Bad with directions. I have no, can't get my bearing. Hey, listen, if the worst thing you could say about a guy is he's not really good with directions, fuck off. I don't give a hey, fuck. Hey, Bruce, even if you're going the wrong way, at least you're going fast. <laughs> is Bruce a fast driver? I've never noticed that. I haven't ridden with you a lot. I'm a slow driver. I don't like driving fast. So I like Cadillacs. Yeah. I like going yeah, slow. Thank God. <laughs> this fucking guy. Oh, my God, dude. It's like his glasses are like a funhouse mirror. He fucking drove. We were taking turns driving, and Joe's like, I'll drive. We're like, you sure? Dude, he was driving. He slammed on the brakes. Do his face when he drives, what his face looks like. He's going, right? Yeah, he's. And then. He puts his head down. We stop short, and I go, oh, shit. Dude, the car was like 40 yards in front of us. (laughs) Yeah, he. that time. It was like 20 feet. He fucking stopped short, and I'm looking at him like, what the fuck? And then he just started inching up. I'm like, Joe, what are you doing? He goes, I just don't want to hit that guy in front of us. I'm like, Joe, the guy's like fucking 10 car lengths away, and he just starts laughing. Well, uh, and, and that, that night in question, I didn't volunteer to drive in an ice storm, a van. Anyone can always drive. I never want to drive. I like to drink. I don't like to drive. I never want to drive. Hey, Paul, you know, look, if, if, if you're fucking the third string quarterback, there's going to be that game. <laughs> there's going to be that game where all of a sudden, like, oh, shit, I'm going in. That's what happened. Yeah. You're fucking, he was sitting there looking at the plays. I was holding the clipboard. I was looking at chicks in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the third row. Joe DeBerg <laughs> came into the game. <laughs> I need the headset on. Joey Testaverde came fucking in out of retirement, throwing, ke- playing catch with his kid in the backyard. Remember that time he was like playing catch and he got the fucking call. You yelled at me the other night when you're like, Jesus, Bart, Nick, and I, cause you're, you get to call out the tree trimmer to trim the your street sign. You can't read where you live. I'm not going to say it on the air. All right. Well, I will tell you this. You're the only guy that complains about that. <laughs> you're the only guy who can't find my fucking street. There's a street sign. I have to have the directions on my phone so when it says turn here, I can turn. Like, I can't just eyeball it. Yeah, well, all right. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll get on that. I'll get down there with a fucking hacksaw. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll, try to cut the, uh, we'll try to cut the tree back. But I'm with you, man. I'm not a speed guy. Unless I'm late. Other than that, I like to just sort of fucking cruise. Okay, it's Policy Genius, everyone. You know, what's easier than opening a can of cranberry sauce? I'll tell you what, getting free life insurance quotes with Policy Genius. Why? Policy Genius. Policy Genius makes it easy to compare quotes from over a dozen top insurers all in one place. Why compare? Because you could save over 1,300 big ones or more. Paulie, how many, how many Air Jordans is that? 1,300. You get a pair of cements and a fucking hoodie to match. You can save 1,300 or more per year on a life insurance by using Policy Poly, Poly, Polly Verzi, Policy Genius, to compare your policies. The licensed experts at Policy Genius work for you, not the insurance companies, so you can trust them to help you navigate every step of, shop, of the shopping and buying process. That kind of surface has earned Policy Genius thousands of five star reviews across Trustpilot in Google, and eligible applicants can get covered in as little as a week. Thanks to an award winning policy option that swaps the standard medical exam re- reti- uh, requirement for a simple phone call that exclusive how are you feeling oh dude i feel great all right you're insured this exclusive policy was recently rated number one by forbes advisor higher than options from ladder uh ethos and bestow uh, getting started is easy. First, head to policygenius.com slash better. In minutes, you can work out how much life insurance coverage you need and compare personalized quotes to find your best price. When you're ready to apply, the Policy Genius team will handle the paperwork and scheduling for free. Policy Genius doesn't add extra fees. So head to policygenius.com slash better to get started now. Policy Genius. You know, Paul, when it comes to insurance, it's nice to get it right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you like that morning radio pause? That was fu- that was fucking textbook. And uh, remember the time Bill dumped the car? Remember the time we were in Canada and we were going, and Bill just fucking dumped the rental and fucking left it there, and it was there for months. <laughs> I was driving responsibly, dude. Yeah. We no, got I'm Andrew. Saying, we I'm- got so fucking hammered. We got so <laughs> fucking. <laughs> hammered the 30 minute nap didn't take didn't oh, take us <laughs> we got in we had like we got in at like 5 30 we had to be up at six we were so fucking hammered and we came downstairs and then i remember trying to get to the airport 
It was foggy out, and we were, we were like fucking four hours north of Toronto or something, and none of our GPS was working, and I thought I could remember how to get to the airport, and then we were just going to miss the flight, so we just, I was like, I got to take this car back. We drove it back to the, the hotel, and I came walking into the fucking guy that you tried to give a drink to behind the, uh, the counter, the fucking clerk there, and I go, dude, can you do us a huge favor? Can you call us a cab? And can you, I'll give you 20 bucks. I said, can you return the rental car? And the guy's like, no problem, no problem. Well, I was so fucking hammered, I forgot about all of that shit. <laughs> and like six weeks later, I get a call from a rental car company in Canada going, like, yeah, we're calling about the, uh, whatever, the, the fucking Camry. You know what? I was walking my dog, the late great uh, Cleo Diego Byrne. I was just like going, uh, yeah, what are you talking about? I returned that. They were, because like, we're running when you're going to return it. I returned it. We don't have any record. I'm like, well, I brought it back. I mean, I'm like, I don't, I mean, it's a Camry. I'm not going to jail for a Camry, okay? You know, <laughs> I brought it back. They called me like three times and I was flipping out. I go, stop calling my number. I brought it back and I was freaking out. And then I, then in, in yelling at her, she said something. I was like, oh, wait a minute. I just fessed up. I was like, you know, I just remembered. I was like, I'm sorry, ma'am. I go, me and my friends were hammered and we were staying. I go, there's only one hotel downtown. It's in that parking lot. <laughs> and they were able, they must have gone down and found it because they never called me again. But like, uh. she was like, she was like apologetic to me because she's Canadian as I'm telling her that I'm a fucking alcoholic and couldn't, <laughs> couldn't bring a car back. Yeah, you called and me. she was going like, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Or, oh, I'm glad you're all right. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> and as I meanwhile, then I'm thinking like, oh my God, am I gonna own? Th am I gonna owe three months on this fucking car? But uh, they got it back, and I've been to Canada since then. And and you know, I, I was able to get in the country, and there wasn't any sort of outstanding warrant on me for stealing that fucking car or anything. But uh, yeah, well, that's what we did. We did that yeah, little. You we did called, that. but you called like three months later, and you're like, hey, we were in Canada. Do you remember like bringing back the car? And I go. No, remember we went two blocks there and like we can't drive, and we brought it back to the hotel. That's right. <laughs> it was much. Yeah, like, it was a long time after. It wasn't like so that was one of the most responsible things, man. That was really responsible because my stupid ass would have been like, no, I slept and tried to make it, and I would have fucking gotten arrested. That was really smart of you to to pull over. No, and I say I mean, fuck. I just told. I mean, you know. I mean that guy behind the counter. Maybe he was just afraid of us because we were just slurring and shit. I mean, don't say you're going to return a rental car and then you do. I mean, that's not the Canada Michael Moore talks about, Paul. He says no, you can leave not. your doors unlocked. You can give them keys and they'll return the rental he, car he for you. Good, he was a fun guy. He was a good guy. He had his uncle drive to the airport for free. Wow, dude, your tolerance is incredible. I don't remember any of that. Yeah, I mean, it was like, you know. It was Wait, a, we watched like some sort of like the women's Canadian team or the U.S. team. What did we watch the night we before? We watched the women's Cana U.S. women's hockey, and it was the same night that Villanova, Carolina yeah, had what, that like quadruple yeah. overtime Final Four game. It was a Monday night. <laughs> we got destroyed. Destroyed. <laughs> and I just and remember you guys had looking some at my five watch. Hour, you guys had like, had like a five-hour argument going on about some, yeah, me and you, something petty. Me and you were – me and Bill were – that was actually one of like the top two or three times me and Bill actually got fucking heated. Where it was, <laughs> I know. I'm like, easy, drunk. ladies. <laughs> we're all gonna go home. We're all gonna get in the car. We're all gonna go home together. It's all gonna be fine. I don't even remember that. <laughs> you know what's funny? I haven't drank for almost three years. It's three years this month. I haven't had one of those since then. It's, it, it, Paul, when was the last time you and me? When was like? I mean, you got to go back. Yeah, you got to go back at least at least fucking three years. The one time that I remember being hammered with you was when we got the tickets to the Rangers. We went with Mazzilli. We sat like next to fucking Tom Hanks. We got, they were just pouring vodkas this big and they just, and then we went to a bar and I went back to your place and it was the first time I ever remember me and you both kind of staggered. We looked like Rocky and Apollo in Rocky <laughs> 2. Who's going to get up? It was like we were fucking, we were, and then that's the night you said, Paul, I can't let you drive, dude. Just sit on the couch for a half hour. And then four hours later, my wife called crying. I had to tell your son, you're not coming. It was, hey, it was a, it was not a great night. It's not dude, a great I remember, night, but, I remember uh, you and I getting into it in a casino somewhere. I just, oh, it, it might've been with a, with the some fucking drunk, other drunk guy. 
I don't. I yes. dude, I. I just. I'm glad those days are behind me. I, you are. You are. I, I, you're not in my act, but you are an, a man on the rock bottom list because I'm the last person you drank with was me. Yeah, and I said when he drank over my house, and we were watching uh, Michigan versus Ohio State. It was halftime, so the game was probably already over. The way Michigan's been for this fucking century. Um, and I remember we were drinking Kentucky Owl. I remember looking at you, and I finished one. I was like, dude, I'm never quitting. <laughs> I loved it. I absolutely, I loved that I went out drinking the best, like, I think it was, it was a rye. It wasn't, I didn't have the bourbon. That was the best It was fucking delicious. Booze. I was destroyed oh. going that Notre Dame-USC game. I remember taking that Uber like, oh my God, we drank a lot that day. But the, 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 the best argument, I, I just had to, it was just on Frazier this, because, you know, uh, Frazier loves boxing, is when Verz was talking about middleweights. And you, oh. you had one of the greatest lines ever. Because I go, Verzi. Verzi thinks that, you know, the kid today, Mayweather. Mayweather it was a thinks, foregone conclusion that, that he, 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 would have, he, would have beat, of he would have beat all four of them. And, and, and no, no, you just, I said, I'll give you, I'll give you Arguello. I'll give you Pryor, even though it's ridiculous. I'll give you John the Beast Mugabe. It's ridiculous. I'll give you Duran. I'll give you Hearns. Hearns would look at him with his big fist and knock and scare him. I'll give you all those guys. I wouldn't even argue that. But don't come to me. Paul, and tell me that he could beat marvelous Marvin Hagler and Sugar Ray Leonard. And after two hours, a big steak, a lot of booze, <laughs> you finally gave up and you stuff and go, give this kid a malt. That was a big... <laughs> yeah, but but because he but didn't know his history. Out. No, but you're leaving one thing out. You're leaving out that lawhead, Jason Lawhead, which was the one that was getting me really when I started to really start. He said that they would all beat the fuck out of him. He goes, they would put him in a corner and beat the fuck out of him. And Thomas, uh, uh, Hitman Hearns and all of them go, dude, but, but fucking Marvel, Marvel Smart, Marvin Hagler showed up to a fucking Mayweather event and asked for his autograph and said he's the best he's ever fucking seen. I'm not saying those guys wouldn't have beat him, but Lawhead said they would all beat the fuck out of him. No, That's but you, you, also said, you also said that he would beat all of them you did say that I said, could, I said he could beat all of them i said he could no beat you all always them. do this paul you make the statement the argument happens and then by the end of the argument you 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 back it off i'm not no, saying i'm not, I'm not saying he, i said he could beat them all i said yes i said he could beat them all i said he could beat them all and you said I'll you give said you he half. would beat Why? them all said, you said he would beat them all this is what difference paul between when mayweather fought and when those guys fought those guys all came in at the same time in their prime in their fucking prime. It wasn't a watered-down fucking league. There wasn't 15 fucking middleweight belts. There was one belt. Sugar and you Ray never ducked the mayor of the Philippines for five years. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Pacquiao reference for anybody out there. Yeah, I mean, come on, dude. Clip that one, Andrew. He also, didn't want to lose to a guy on, he also didn't want to lose to a guy on steroids, which he clearly was. True. Uh, true. Listen. He's this big. He's Kevin Shea size. Okay, let the guy take a steroid. Jesus Christ, it's <laughs> boxing. You're allowed to hit somebody, Mayweather. It's not dancing see, Lord, with the that stars. Night, that night in the steakhouse at the Mirage, that night in the steakhouse at the Mirage, what got us excited because we started screaming was saying that they would beat the fuck out of him, which is just if anybody watches boxing and sees his de defense, he, they wouldn't have. But, Paul, you started it. You started it. Okay. You started it mean, saying that he was the greatest. We said, well, you know, Hagler, Hearns, and all of these guys, they all fought at the same time. He goes, no, you, you were like, they beat them all. And then Lawhead went, hey, they, they, they beat the fuck. Lawhead went too far. You guys, you and Lawhead were both too far on either yeah. side. And you're sitting there with the, oh, your little shoulder rolling, bookie dookie dookie, like that, that these guys couldn't figure that shit out. That they wouldn't have been able to figure that shit out. Dude, I'll tell you right now, Sugar Ray Leonard, he figured everybody out. He beat everybody. Sugar Ray Leonard actually did what you said fucking Mayweather would do. He beat all of those guys. I mean, he got Hearns the second time. He even says he lost to Hearns the second time. But, like, I'm telling you, man, in their fucking prime, like, that's what sucks about boxing is that you got, like, fucking, you know, there was, you know, somebody trying to unify the title. Back in the day, I just loved yeah. it. There, there was one belt. So everyone was going after the same belt. It wasn't like, I'm a heavyweight champion. Well, I'm the heavyweight champion over here. I don't know. Whatever. Well, we're, we're, we're gonna I, get to the fight I still again. think Hagler like, threw the fight against uh, Leonard. He never hit the body. 
When, I don't when think did, he threw the fight. I think that he he fucking won the fight and they didn't give it to him. Well, yeah, the other because they were setting that, it up for the rematch. Well, the other theory is too is that uh, Leonard hid for two and a half minutes and the the last thirty seconds he threw a couple flurries to make it look like he was fighting. Well, he oh yeah, he made, I mean the guy understood how it worked and everything. My favorite uh, uh, Hearn's uh, Leonard story was after that fight. I'm sorry, Hagler uh, Leonard thing was after they fought. Um. You know, Hagler was, like, disappointed, but, like, he had a life. So he just said, fuck it, and he left. And then, like, years later, they were at some sort of, you know, honoring, you know, the great boxers, and they were both there. And Leonard had some guy come over and say to Hagler, like, hey, man, you know, anytime you want the rematch, we'll make a ton of money, let's do it, blah, 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 blah. And Hagler just said, tell Ray to get a life. And I just love that he, f- he went out like Carson. He was at the That's top fun. of his game. He did lose, but he was like, I've made my fucking money. I don't want to do this my whole life. Fuck this shit. I got other stuff. To, Fuck you know. Joan Rivers. Yeah. Who's Joan Rivers? What, 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 Joan what? Rivers. What about her? See, he went out like Carson. He did go out like Carson. I know it was a joke. Another joke that fell flat. Oh, you're saying the other guy went out like Joan Rivers? <laughs> no, I'm saying you go, he went out like Carson. I said, he said, Fuck Joan Rivers. Remember, he fucked over Joan Rivers. Johnny Carson. Oh, you went deep on that one. I'm sorry. So you're saying he's his Joan Rivers? All I'm, right, so now i got to explain this. Jesus, dude, you're going like you're going deep cut here on us. I'm All right, so what Jim happened Ladd was Joan... Here after Joan, dark on KLOS. <laughs> <laughs> Here's some deep you're cut. Going, you're going Eddie Trunk here, like <laughs> naming the replacement guitarist for Crocus. Um, Joan Rivers was uh, one of Johnny Carson's favorite, uh, arguably top fucking three or the four. The ratings were up when com- she guest hosted. Yes, top three, four comedians of all fucking time. Is f- she's basically right there with Carlin as far as like how much material she wrote. And like I saw her in the 2000s, dude, and I was just like, holy shit. I wouldn't say any of that stuff. Like she, she was, had balls. She was fucking unbelievable. So she was like with the guest host and all that shit and was in with Johnny Carson. And then they gave her an offer. When Johnny was getting old to do her own talk show on Fox uh, with the great Vinnie Colaiuta as, as, uh, as the music uh, boss there, whatever you call it, the, the band director. And um, she didn't clear it with Johnny, didn't ask. She just kind of did it and then went. And he never talked to her again, never spoke to her again, which I think was stupid. So, Verzi, when Spotify comes calling for anything better, ask Bill. <laughs> I would never I would never be that petty. I would never be that petty. Why would no. you do why would you do that? I mean I'm just trying to bring a joke here. I know. I why? But I was just pissed me off like, why are you gonna get fucking mad at her because she's trying to get a gig that you have? Who gives a shit? It's I a just, compa- I think it's comp- poor form to get mad at, ch- at chicks that you ain't banging. Just enough. You know? That needs to be um, on a t shirt. It's poor dude, form to get mad ahead. at a woman you're not banging. Dude, go in- <laughs> And I gotta, Can we get I gotta, that on a nice soft T-shirt? <laughs> How about a hard T-shirt? It's soft. <laughs> How about a rugged flannel? Can we get that on a sleeveless fucking uh, T-shirt? No, but dude, going back to the going back to the boxing thing. That's why Dana White and the UFC. I was completely wrong about that. I was completely wrong thinking that it would never catch on like boxing because boxing was so. But then Dana White did something that boxing has never done, which is basically. Once a month, there's a main event that's like a must-see if you're into the sport. It's the two best guys. The ranked number one guy has to fight the ranked number two guy for the belt. There's no dodging it. It's just what it is. And if not, Dana White's like, fuck you. I'll get the next guy. And that's why it's so much fucking better. And um, And how about the fact that that sport started after the NFL, MLB, NHL, and whoever I forgot there, and the NBA were already established as like, this is what people are watching. Then you had golf fans, you had tennis fans and all of that shit. And they came out of nowhere and passed everybody and went global. Everything like the NFL and everybody wants to do is go global like soccer. They actually did it. And I was like, wow, that's so amazing that they they did that. But if you look back in the early 1900s, the two biggest sports were, was, were boxing and horse racing. Now, I don't think horse racing ever comes back. I think people had more of a connection with horses because they grew up with them. You know, the car was brand new and everything. But, like, fighting, two people fighting. I remember Rogan saying this. Like, if you're just driving down the street, you see two guys fighting, you're going to fucking pull over and watch it. I see two two people playing catch. I'm going to keep driving. 
No one leaves a hockey game when there's a fight. No. <laughs> <laughs> no one sits down yeah. when there's a fight. Yeah, there's, it's just yeah. It, is, it is what it is, and the way that they have uh, they marketed the whole thing. I mean, it's it's. Um, I still don't think they get the credit. The fact that they. I mean, I think the only thing bigger than them would be so, like the World Cup soccer, right? Yeah, dude, it's like, and, and, and it's almost like when a football player, when they're like, oh, that guy's, or a basketball player, he's a good shooter, he's not good on defense. If you're like that in the uh, UFC, then you have to learn to wrestle because a guy knows you're a striker. So then what he's going to do is get you on the ground to take that part of your game out. And now that guy is going to learn that to defend that. It's really, uh, yeah, man, I was wrong about the UFC. I love Saturday nights if I'm off and I get a card. And we order food and watch those fucking fights, dude. It's awesome, dude, man. We got to do it. that. We, I gotta, we got to book a gig where we're all in the same place and just have the Saturday night off. Dude, this just... Saturday is one of the biggest ones they've ever had. That that Covington guy versus Usman. But then they're also having like the, the undercard. Like the, the card is incredible. And it's at the Garden. It's at the Garden uh, this Saturday Are night. Are you going? Man, for the... For the middleweight champ? No, I'm going to be uh, I'm gonna be in Houston. But it's uh, for the middleweight championship. Uh and that, the, the shit talking that these guys are doing is fucking great. Hey, you know so. what's cool is Rogan just played MSG in the round. So how cool yeah. is it that he gets to come back again in an like entirely that. different part of show business? It's sold out again in the because he did it in the round. Um, that he gets to come back again. Like I, you know, I can come here. I can sell it out as a comedian. I can come here as a commentator. The place is sold out. That's pretty... Uh, all he has to do now is do a live podcast. <laughs> and I would say that's his building at that He's point. He's like, I don't have to fight anybody. I can just tell some jokes. Yeah, tell some jokes. I can fucking... I can interview somebody. Uh, and think about that, though. Like, we... Us three... Actually, us three had the night of our... I know it was the night of... One of the nights of my life. One of the sets of my fucking life in front of 18,000 people. Could you imagine doing that walk, having to fight a dude? Like, it's such a level of balls that, like, if you bomb, people kind of forget. <laughs> if you get knocked the fuck out, nobody's forgetting. It's the garden. That's what I was saying. I thank God I did great. And I'm not even trying to do my own horn, but I could, I'd never live with myself if I didn't do good that night. Because I was, I always tell people, I would hate, especially the after party with all the industry people, like, oh, you were great when you knew you could have done better. That's the worst. <laughs> yeah. So I knew I couldn't have done any better. Did you ever you ever yeah. got you ever go see boxing at MSG? You ever gone to a boxing match at MSG? I've never seen live I've never seen a combat sport live ever. Never boxing, never UFC, nothing. I saw Miguel Cotto, I forget who he fought, and the undercard was this Irish John Duddy. When I was <laughs> I, like a guy on like Mike Tyson dude, knockout, like yeah. Irish John Duddy. <laughs> dude, this guy had a fucking left hook, man. I'm telling you. And he used to come out to my uh to my shows when I'd be down Caroline's. And he, uh, I asked him, I got to ask him, I go, dude, what are you thinking when you're walking in Madison Square Garden shirtless, walking into an arena like a gladiator to go fight Wait, somebody? Who asked? Who asked Kodo? I asked, no, no, uh, Irish John no. Duddy. <laughs> and I go, uh, I go, what are you thinking? And he, he, what's going through your head? And then he just, he, he was saying, he goes like, what am I doing? Like, why do I do this? He did say with this crazy, like, Irish accent. It was awesome. But he was just like, why am I doing this? Yeah, he was like a great white hope there for a second. Um, and then I think he, he ended up getting into, like, uh, to like acting or whatever. But he showed up. He won that night. And I remember there was a whole section of Irish people with the flag going fucking nuts. And I remember just sitting. All I was thinking there was just like, man, what I do for a living is bullshit. This is, like, this is insane. And uh, I think that all the time. It's like I'm. Just, it's just like oh, I tell these jokes. And that's it. Have a couple of drinks. It's the best. It is. It is. <laughs> Compared to getting... someone boxing, <laughs> I know. I, that's what I always hate. I always hate when, when they talk about comedians. He trained like a fighter before his stand-up special. He's like, no, he didn't. Yeah. Skipping rope yeah. and is not boxing. Sparring yeah. with somebody and getting your brains knocked around is just you know. <laughs> I drink. I, I... I, I drink like I'm getting ready for a fight with yeah. Irish John yeah. Duddy. I cut weight so I wouldn't look like a fat no, fuck in yeah, my Bart special. Bartnick's not waking up at four in the morning to run five miles and drink raw eggs before he does a set. <laughs> yeah, going from stand up New York to fucking the comic strip, you know, all in one night. That is not. That's my road work. Yeah, getting getting winded going from uh, getting winded going from Fourth Street up to uh, 
<laughs> Grizzly bear <laughs> running up yeah. the steps. I got another spot yeah. in 10 minutes at 4th Street. I'm finally, I've been hitting the gym. I'm finally dropping. I'm fucking still got it here, man. I'm fucking dropping this COVID weight, dude. I've just, I was like two pounds a week. That's it. Laying off bread and all of this shit. Sucks. I'm 224. Yeah, Barton looks, Barton looks, Barton looks ready to go. I got I got I still got to drop. I don't know. Another I, 10 and I'm good. good. You want to know what I the went, most uh, watched? It's been a track oh, yeah. good. What's that? Now the most, I pulled up just because he asked the most watched sporting event. The, uh, they estimate the Tour de France, three and a half billion viewers over 23 days. You got to be shit. But wait, 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 wait. It's 23 days. <laughs> yeah. Over 23 days because I got 23 days to build the That's numbers. what I'm guessing why. World Cup 3.3. Is it on in like every airport in the world like CNN? Right. I mean, who the hell? You can't tell me that gets more right, listen, people than the World I, that's, Cup. I, that this looks like I got to tell you, man. One of my bucket lists is I want to go to the Tour de France. Le Mans. And, and pull the string out Dude, and trip people. <laughs> no. I, I just, how, how athletic are those bikers that one of them falls and like a hundred of them almost die? You're supposed to be able to ride a bike. I could avoid them. And I don't even ride bikes. No, that's ridiculous. No, it's not. You're riding your you turn. You go around them. They're going like 60 miles an hour and they're right on top of each other. It was at the other. starting gate. Well, this is the thing, dude. It's their their, their feet are in the pelt. Dude, you yeah, you can't even ride a fucking tricycle. You can't even see. What the fuck are you talking about? I hate when people oversimplify something because they can do it. Like, cause this fucking jerk off can ride a bike. He's like, hey, these Tour de France guys. They're not even athletic. Like they can't even ride a bike, but they're in the Tour de France. They're riding up and down a mountain at sixty fucking miles an hour. But you would I, think I, they'd be able to avoid somebody. They blame that chick yeah, holding the stops, sign. Nobody they stops short like chi- you, though. You know they they blame that chick holding the sign like she's you know like a terrorist. And it's like all they had to do was go around. So when stock car, when some guy fucking wipes uh, goes into a spin and they have a forty car crash, that means these guys don't know how to drive. A car at two hundred miles an hour is a little different than like a bike going one mile an hour. I, I disagree one hundred percent, Joe. Okay. I disagree. When I, you're not, not going to disrespect them just because it's bike racing. And I know that you feel the same way. I, listen, I share your views I'm about bike. people that people that ride bicycles in Los Angeles. I 100%. And everywhere else around the country. Let's not just keep it to Los Angeles. I know Verzi oh, no, has a problem up in Westchester. I'm, I'm not no, going to give worst. away my They're ass. They're the most arrogant, <laughs> the most arrogant fucking assholes. And like, they won't get out of the way. This guy I get the share in the road. Yeah. I don't want to hit you. But, like, yeah. I'm in a car. I need to get where I'm going, and I allotted the time for the car. Dude, th- those fucking assholes, when they're just riding down the street side by side, shooting the shit, and they got, like, five cars behind them. It's like, no. like, I get it. You know, just, just get behind and let everybody get by. Just be as courteous as you want. And those cunts don't stop at stop signs. They don't stop at fucking red lights. They don't obey, obey any because other the rules law, of the road. The law's on their side. Because the law is on their fucking side. Not out here, dude. Not out here. They have to follow the rules of the road. Oh, uh, no. Here in New York, especially here, and there's no fucking path for them. They're arrogant. They take up a quarter of the main road on a double yellow line. They tell you to go around. They give you a dirty look. I've seen cars with fucking families that swerve away from each other. Dude, I said this. I, I, if I was a serial killer, that's my target. I would kill cyclists. I would kill cyclists. You'd be cyclists a lazy serial city. killer. They're the easiest people to kill. Fucking hey, morons are like riding down the street. Like it's I, out here. Like whenever I see somebody on like a scooter or a bicycle, I like that has to be a young person that you, you believe that you're that invulnerable. All of these fucking idiots, myself included, texting while driving and shit. You try not to do it, but you do it. And your dumbass is going to be out on a bicycle or a scooter with your back to traffic. You're out of your fucking mind. Out and of I your don't want to hear mind. anybody who listens to this podcast, because I know this is going to fucking happen. Spare us your fucking tweet about, hey, not all bicyclists. You guys don't know what the fuck you're doing. Yeah, you're great. You fucking do it better than everybody. We don't want to fucking hear it. Most of you guys are fucking assholes. Don't fucking tweet. It is. It's a safe assumption. That most people on bicycles are cunts. They just are. I, I'm trying to think of the last time when somebody cool on a bike. You know what? You know the, who's, who the cool ones are? The guys dressed in street clothes. And I'm always like, that's probably a convicted Here's drunk the driver. the only cool guys. The guys delivering food. That's it. Delivering food. I, I, I like those guys. But I, I like someone that's hugging the traffic will actually go up on the sidewalk, which they're not supposed to do. I, 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 mean, I, I feel like I'm going to do my act. But basically... Other than delivering food, if you're a dude going to work, that's cool. If you're dressed up, 
you're not cool. I know. Why do they, 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 they got to wear all that stupid fucking clothes? It's like the guy that gets you're not in a time get, trial. It's like the guy that goes dressed, dressed up to the gym. What are you dressing up for? I don't get that either. Why Why now when you go to the gym do you got to wear this fucking Marvel comic fucking outfit? It's just like... Why go to the gym? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, what was wrong with the gray sweat fucking pants and the gray hoodie? What was wrong with that? That's what they wear to school now. Did did, did that Just literally the, get yes. in the way of benching? Like, I don't understand why you got to go down there. And the chicks with like their fucking half, their belly out, their fucking titties out and shit. And you're not supposed I'm to. I'm pro look. that. You're not supposed to look though, but you're not supposed to look. Then you're being an asshole. Oh, I look. Oh, I, I want to tell you something. I leer. <laughs> um, you have to. <laughs> They, they they want you to. Why else are they there? Those chicks don't like doing those squats. Now they're doing that shit where they're like they're fucking the barbell. What is that for? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I think that's for your back. Really? I don't know. I, it looks like. Oh no no like, no! That that one's for your for your legs. Or, 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 it looks like it's just because ass? they want to fuck somebody as big as me and they want to be able to handle me. I, like <laughs> I, 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 I'm not I'm not a top, ladies. Don't worry about it. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? These little fucking Mexican broads up there fucking banging out, like doing like I know what the exercise, dead, yeah. Deadlifts with their uterus. No, yeah, that's well, I, a, I think that's for the legs. I think that's... <laughs> it looks like it's for the uterus or your balls if you're a guy doing it, but I'm, I'm trying to remember. I got to say, I've, I've only seen one or two guys. It seems like it's an epidemic. Or I guess, yeah, because pandemic is what we have. An if it was just in your gym and in the gym... Gyms in the general area, I believe that's an epidemic. Way too many, uh, way too many people at the gym now are doing all these heavy dumbbell barbells. Like you can't even get a bench now. It's like they all have, they're all doing these like uh, that kind of exercise or like deadlifting. It's like oh, you know what the worst? It's like you're a thirty pound Mexican lady. You need a deadlift. The worst is the fat fuck that just continues to be a fat fuck, but has the fucking personal trainer, and they just kind of come in and like just grab all of this fucking shit, every dumbbell, a TRX fucking thing, and and then they're doing like some sort of cycle thing. Yeah. And I just want to look at the guy and be like, you're stealing this guy's money. This guy's been as fat as he's been since I've been going to this fucking gym. He's not losing any he weight. He knows because no one in shape uses a trainer. Who in shape uses a trainer? Nobody. No one wants to hear somebody bitch at them. Some some half a guy like no, no, you should be doing this. Weight. They always make trainers just make you do lunges to think you're important. Do this lunge across. It's like dude, no, you're gonna get hurt. Every time I see someone train someone, like, I, mean, I want to tell the guy or girl, you're gonna get hurt. This guy doesn't know shit. When he went to community college for exercise, <laughs> fucking tell you how to work out. <laughs> <laughs> they just want a oh, Paul, everybody's getting it today. Bikers, <laughs> personal trainers. Yeah. I come in hot. <laughs> Anything yeah. better than hanging out with Bill and Paul, Andrew, my, you know my, 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 my great producer, Aaron. You guys stole him today. I'm running late. Dude, I swear to God, I would, I would fucking, uh, I'd kill for a stick right now. Oh. Uh. I, I want to do a life. virtual stick with Paul the other night, but Paulie was sick. I was going to fucking congratulate him on, dude, Paul is crushing the, 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 picks, this, the picks this year, man. Dude, what, what, part of his Monday night special, you pick three things on a Monday night. One of his things was Patrick Mahomes was going to throw a pick. You know what I mean? Which you can say that, but to actually put money on it. Real the, money. The man came through. Real money or virtual MGM money? Well, we're betting against each other. Oh, for the uh, for the end of the year, so I don't know. I was impressed. Verzi, Verzi likes you to spend. <laughs> What's that? Verzi likes to spend. Yeah, Verzi, you like to like spend. spend. He'll up the odds. Uh, me, put and, a little uh, money on me that. Me and Joe were uh, me and Joe were at a cashier buying something, and I go, Joe, be honest with me, dude. Do I? All my friends, Bill, my wife, all my friends say I, I I'm not good with money. I spend. What do, you, what do you be honest with me, Joe? And Joe goes, you spend a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, he goes, first, you, you like to spend. <laughs> you like to spend. No, hey, one, no, one loves, no one loves hanging out with Verzi, even his wife, more than I do. I swear to God, nobody does, right? But if Verzi somehow doesn't make something, I'm like, well, I'm saving a couple hundred bucks. Because <laughs> you never have to up the ante. Because Verzi's always going for another round. He's always going, to, let's stop here. Verzi, Verzi eats like he's training for the decathlon every three hours. Here's the, go get a meal. Here's a little thing. hungry. Here's the thing. If I invite you to eat, and you know this, you guys know this, if I invite you to dinner, Nobody's wallet comes out. Never. If I invite you to dinner, I yeah, pay. Paul, everybody does that. No. I've had guys, hey, you want to go? You want to go fucking eat? And then all of a sudden the bill comes. Everybody fucking divvying up their car, dude. Believe me. They're not all like fucking us. All right. Uh, that's why that's, that's, you know. You know, what's that? 
Three. The yeah. triangle. The triangle it, offense here. You don't you don't say, hey, let's go meet at a steakhouse, let's go grab a bite. And then when the bill comes, you just start like divvying up or look at like or everybody throws a card and it's like, no, whoever said Dude, that gives go me out, a headache when people do that. It's just like, it's, can it's I just anxiety. fucking, can I just put it down? Yeah, can I just put this fucking thing down? I'm going to sit there watching you guys dividing up coleslaw. I just did that the other night. I go, don't insult me. Here you go. Enough. Get out of here. Pay for parking. Yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'll give my card to the waiter before the bill comes. So I'll be like, here, when they just, just. Look at him. Yeah. Oh, I tried, oh, I tried, he tried to that. that in he tried that. <laughs> He tried that. Oh. We were in Atlanta, and he tried to be the big shit. I'm by, I got breakfast, so he gives him the fucking I card. Didn't, I didn't announce it. I just tried no, to do no. it. He tried to sneak it. Oh yeah. We were all we were all <laughs> telling stories of picking up. Here, I got to tell the story. This is the best. We were we we get to, we get to the Atlanta airport. We get to the Atlanta airport an hour and a half before all of our flights. Bill and Joe are flying together. I'm flying to New York. We go, let's go sit down. We'll get it, you know, we'll sit down. Joe goes, I want to, I want a waitress. I want a waitress. I don't want to just get something quick. So I'm like, great, me too. We go, we sit down. We start telling tales about picking up tabs and shit. We start telling tabs about uh, Chicago and all this and who picks up tabs, who doesn't. You know, we start talking about that. And all of a sudden, Joe disappears, comes back. We start talking. And as we're talking, this waitress comes over and she goes, uh, she goes, excuse me, uh, Joe just starts to wave her off. <laughs> he starts going, back. Yeah, no, no, it's OK. It's OK. You know, and she goes, no, I, I got to talk to you. And she was trying to, like, talk to him in private. He goes, no, 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 it's OK. You know, <laughs> he goes, they know, they know, they know, they know. They know, they know, don't worry, you know, and she goes, yeah, the thing is, uh, the car didn't go through, and Joe just goes, oh! <laughs> he goes, oh! Okay, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> she tried saving you. She tried saving you. She did, she was trying to save the embarrassment. Kept going, they oh. No, they know, they know, go ahead, it's good, they know. And he's like, all right, your card got declined. And he's like, oh! <laughs> if anybody knows I don't get embarrassed that you guys eh, shit happens what are you gonna do hey, B of A sometimes would be like there's no way this guy could be everywhere all the time but now they know just never you know like they, yeah yeah cause you travel yeah yeah then B of A's always had my back I they, they gave me back money on two hookers that didn't perform I told you guys that story I didn't know you could do that I didn't either until they did you Wait, paid a happened? hooker with a credit card well yeah <laughs> I wanted the paper trail. <laughs> I was in Vegas. Can you please run for office <laughs> so when someone goes, it says here when you're in Reno, <laughs> Reno. You, you, you got, you, paying, you got, you got a couple of hookers. I'm not getting hookers in Reno. I'm not, dirt, I'm not a dirt bag. It's Vegas. All right. You got a couple <laughs> of hookers, and then you just go, well, yeah. <laughs> somebody And somebody dosed me. Uh, it was so, something or other, or laced my marijuana. I basically we had to, we all these strippers, and I worked on 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 a show, uh, my show, and I worked on the show was in the show uh, for Playboy t Television, and we had a big party, and we already have have strippers, so I'm like, let's get a couple hookers, let, lighten the mood, you know, up the ante a little bit. <laughs> Naturally, and uh, they were there, and I basically got someone dosed me, or basically like I think laced my joint. I was done. Sounds like a great party, Joe. It was for a lot of people. Oh, yeah. No, this is, uh, I'll tell you the end of the story. So I. <laughs> Paul, flew, <laughs> Paul just keeps coming in and off the screen. Yeah. No. So I go. So, 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 so basically the next day. So basically the next. So basically they came. I went back to my room. No one was like, we're not. It's Beth's Bartnick deal. They came to my room and they're like, hey, you owe us like $1,500. And I'm like, okay. I go, if I, they're just bother me. One of them was hot. One of them was like, I just wasn't into the the the, the one that looked like Coco was delicious looking, but yeah. the other one, one was, was running the ball. The other was blocking. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then so I go, I go. If I sign, if I pay you guys, you'll leave, right? They go, yeah. So they left. The next day, I called B of A and I said, hey, the, I paid these girls and the services weren't rendered. They took it off my bill and their pimp tried to shake, like threaten me. I'm like, I'll, Wait, I'm like, come at me. What did he say? How did he get a hold of you? Well, they had they'd have my information. Oh. But here's the funny part, right? So the next day, it's like four hours, it's like nine in the morning, my boss from that TV show calls me up because a friend of mine was there. We forgot she was dancing on top of a table, fell, smacked her head. She was dancing on a glass table, fell, smacked her head. 
he calls me up. I'll, I'll leave his name out of it. And he goes, Bartnick, come over here and get this dead hooker out of my room. See the suite? <laughs> <laughs> I went in there. I like, threw a little water. Like, Come on, get, get up. You're, you're okay. Get up. You got. You got to go. We got to leave. <laughs> Thank God she wasn't. Wait, dead. she fell, hit her head, and then was just out for the rest. And you... yeah, I don't like know exactly fucking... what happened. I had my own problems. <laughs> but it was just—it's a funny phone call to get. Wait, this happened to you? Or was that was that that movie? Very bad things. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, I don't see any movies. It's just completely true. I'm my grandmother and my kid. Completely, hundred percent true. Okay. <laughs> All right, dude. Like, I, only Joe would go. Only Joe would hear. Get this dead hooker out of my room and go. It's kind of a weird call to get. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's yeah, a little I mean, early. It's, it's, like, like, I, it's, it's not even noon yet. When you call me, I thought you had an emergency. <laughs> <laughs> Joe well, shows up Joe like Harvey Keitel, the cleaner. He's got a tuxedo on. Oh, that's all you had to say. No, the funniest thing is that Joe, oh, Joe just goes, you know, we got some strippers there. We figured get a couple hookers, lighten the mood. <laughs> yeah, how the are the mood. strippers bringing you down? <laughs> well, strippers are strippers, but you know, hookers are hookers. You know the difference. I know that. I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. I should have oh, saved some dude. of these for the Bartnick podcast. <laughs> no. It's- Bury him in the second half of an episode of this. <laughs> um, I got one, for you guys. I got one. You got for something you guys that follows the- that story? Get this dead hooker out of my hotel room? <laughs> <laughs> no, mine is actually about dogs, so maybe I should skip this week. <laughs> skip this story. No, um, I think, dude. Speaking of spending, and if my wife hears this, it's going to be a hmm. problem. So don't cut this clip. But my wife won't listen. Um. I think I'm going to surprise the family with a with a dog for Christmas. And uh, I spoke to somebody who listens to the podcast, and uh, they're a breeder. And let's just say, oh, it's going to be a big one. <laughs> yeah. So uh, okay. what I'm going to do? What, what how, I'm going to do it weigh? is how much great, does it weigh? It's a great day. It's got to be a great day. It, it's it's a very very big dog, and uh, it's one of the biggest dogs ever. So what I'm going to do is, and if it hopefully it goes through with, with who I'm speaking with, but either way, I'm going to have one of these puppies. What kind of dog? Christmas. A Great Dane. You can't rest. And I'm gonna Wait, those... you're going to surprise your family with a Great Dane. You got it. You got a dog and a cat. Yeah, but here's the thing, though. The Great Dane puppy's like this big, so I'll have some time. Yeah, well, you see six that weeks, too. Blue eyes. Yeah, it's going to have cute blue eyes, Dude, the floppy one I, ears. The one I I'm pulled up last week was like three months old, and it was sitting on a couch eye level. It's good, it's good timing, though, because Lloyd's still young. Because let me tell you, at my house, they're about 95% total friends now. But it took a while because Rube is the old lady. The old lady has the power behind the throne. She controls. She can only controls my wife. She controls Rosie, my German shepherd. It's so hilarious. Ruby will make a noise. Rosie will know what she means, and Rosie will bother my wife. Like, oh, it's time to wow. it's time to go out. It's time yeah, to I'm just this. saying, Paul, like I don't know about that. Dude, that's like those, those great Danes, that's like an NBA center. You know, that's seven foot two, and they're like, you know, I was six feet tall by the time I was in the third grade. That's what you got with the with the great Danes. So you're gonna show up with You gotta run, Paul. You gotta run that dog. I got the, dude, I got the yard, man. I got oh, the wait yard a minute. for it. You gotta run that dog? Versi ain't running. No, I ain't running, but Verzi I will run to get I'll a walk. bed in. That's the only time you'll see Verzi. <laughs> Verzi will run to get a bed in. He'll run to get a stick before the thing closed. Verzi is not running he'll to run, run. He'll run to gate C35, yeah. flight to Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> From TSA, it's yeah. a three-minute run. Yeah. Verzi is run. not running to run. But why would right. you, though? It's a smart move. Why, it, running is stupid. Paul, did you, bud- did well, you budget the food for that thing? But, I mean, the dog needs... Do you have a fence? Dude, that thing's as big dude. as a deer. That you no, can't dude, tie they're... it down. My parents had one before I was born, and like you can't even even if you just want to keep it contained, like they'll pull out anything. They're smart dogs though. The uh dude, it, yeah. And they're, they're smart. The, and I heard they're like the biggest sweethearts and they're fucking great with families. And I have the yard for it. Do you have the house for it? Uh we you know, I'm working on that. You I think I'm gonna addition? get another <laughs> I, I wanna get another working? house too. Permits? You're sick of Giannis uh, already? Up. Wait, you're, you're going to buy this? So now you got to get a new house because you got Dude, this, this dog? 
Ah, it's not coming He's, in. No. A little to the right. There you go. Oh, my God. That's yeah. adorable. I thought about that today. If I was a. Uh, but those things are like child stars. They're cute when they're kids, and then all of a sudden they get older. No one wants to work with them. Paul, are you going to bring a name or are you going to let the kids name it? Uh, I don't know. Look, this is one a different color. Look at this fucking thing. Put it in front of the kids. The tan ones are beautiful, yeah. No, they're gorgeous, yeah, dude. Listen, I would be psyched. If my wife came home with a great day, and I would be fuck. I would be. I love dogs, though. I like wrestling look with them or something. One, look at this mopey look of this last one. <laughs> I mean, dude, what's not to like? Yeah, I. I mean, I fucking love though. I love dogs, dude. That's what I always think. Like you know, those rich people that shoot themselves in the space. That's so selfish. If I had all that right. money, I would just buy every pound. Oh, every <laughs> <laughs> and not like let the dogs all live forever. They're all my dogs. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. Save all the dogs. Or, but, or take all that money and go up into space for 10 minutes. Yeah, I don't understand. Like, I haven't... No, why would you want to do that? I, I, I mean, just by yourself. Just to say... And then you're only up there for 10 minutes. Yeah, it's... You gotta I mean, get the ball rolling. It's like flight, right? It took a little bit. Somebody's like, ah, I ain't going up in that thing. Then 30 years later, everybody's traveling, right? So it's like, you gotta get the <laughs> ball rolling. Well, but you don't want to yeah, be the, the guy that buys the first flat screen yeah. TV and it's I don't fucking go to space 15 right grand. Now. Yeah, yeah. Haven't we done enough? <laughs> Haven't human beings done enough to fucking entertain themselves? Jesus fucking Christ. You got to... I don't know. What, whatever are you going to do? What, 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 hey, what, 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 what do I know about space travel? you see what Elon Musk said? They came out and said that with, with Elon Musk's wealth, they could cure world hunger. So he said, I'll put down $6 billion if you put a plan together. He was basically calling them out because he knows they're not going to have a plan to like end world hunger because that, you know... Fucks up the plan. But he's like, yeah, I'll write a check. You yeah, because the plan. thing is, Dude, that money a, doesn't go a, where it's said it's going to go. That's what he's saying. That's a great yeah. answer. Yeah. Like, yeah, because people are full of shit. That charity money, nobody sees. The best charity to give to, dude, is to St. Jude's Children's Cancer Hospital because those kids don't have any bills. Their parents don't have any bills, and they get the best treatment. That's where you should fucking donate money to St. Jude's, dude, because you know where it's going. Not not some fucking, you know, even that, even that. I don't even trust those fucking PETA people, though. The lover, the animal lovers, they they're all full of shit oh, too. So we had, we had a guy, we had a guy uh, wrote into us. I was saying I was gonna get rid of my cigars at home because I'm just smoking too much. I'd rather have to go out to go get one. And uh, they had a thing where you could donate them and they'd send them over to the troops. It's like which ones? My shit ones. <laughs> <laughs> if I send you a couple of Cubans, those aren't making it over there. The Nobody's Dutch masters are going to be in Kuwait tomorrow. That's, that was my reference. <laughs> yeah. Red be a fucking a pilgrim on the, on the, on the cigar band. And <laughs> <laughs> Anita the Pinta sw and sw the Swisher Santa tip. Maria. Swisher tips. Yes. <laughs> What's that guy's name in Houston? Joel Olstein? Yes. That guy, like, they said that guy's living in, like, a Tony Montana. Dude, I, if your pastor is driving a Ferrari, <laughs> if your pastor has a compound and a fucking Ferrari like that, you got to question Dude, if your pastor going, you know? sells, tells uh, his mass each week where the fucking Houston Rockets used to play, I respect that guy as an entertainer, man. That guy moves tickets. He plays in a, a home game arena every fucking week. He's got new shit every week. On how Jesus likes you and what the fuck you want to do. And he's coming out there. I think, you know, he's closing his eyes. I think he's trying to, like, remember, like, I need a new angle here. <laughs> you said the last time you said, you said he squints so much because he can't even believe the bullshit that's coming out of his <laughs> yeah. mouth. He doesn't so want to see the face. They believe in this shit. <laughs> God, God wants you. He wants you to be as fat as you are. He wants you to... I want you to drive that truck, or whatever the hell it is. Um, Remember that Wayne's that Wayne's Brothers movie? Don't be a menace to South Africa. Don't ask how come or or why come past to have to have him a nice car or or why come how come past to have to have him a nice house. He goes, don't ask any questions, just give the money. <laughs> <laughs> By the yeah. way, dude, Keenan Ivory Reigns underrated his comedy spoofs, dude. Incredible. That dude's a fucking animal, man. Yeah, I know. He's a beast. And, and he created In Living Color, which was fucking... Dude, In Living Color has some of the most epic... I know that it obviously doesn't have the run SNL had throughout history, but you ever see some of those... Dude, old, I say Marlon like, Wayans. Colors? Marlon Wayans being that old black dude when the guy comes by trick-or-treat and he says he's too old. That fucking front kick. Did you see that on Instagram? Somebody turned that into... Wow. Oh, my God. He goes, motherfucker, no. you're too fucking old. He just fucking <laughs> just kicks this guy. Look like he did it for real. And when he did it, he threw his head all the way back. It was fucking hilarious. Hey, that Fifty uh, Shades of Black movie is hilarious. No, they do. And when the, the scary movie thing, all of it, yeah. Yeah. Dude, yeah. 
Dude, they're like the Kennedys. Yeah. They're like the Kennedys of entertainment. There's, every time you think like the last one has come along, there's another one coming along with a movie or something like that. Like there's like 9,000 uh, Kennedys. That was the point Damon of that reference. Wayans and Ed, sorry. Da- Damon Wayans and da- uh, No, I'm sorry. Yeah, Damon Wayans and David Allen Greer did the uh, movie critics. And, and any time it was like a manly movie, it's like, hey, did it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, hilarious. couldn't do that one. Couldn't do couldn't that. Couldn't do that one now, right? Oh, no. Not even fucking remotely. What shows, let's do this real quick on the show. What shows could never be today? Would they do Married with Children today or no? Yeah, he's the idiot. So it passes that test. I know, guys, but yeah. she's kind of slutty. I don't know if they would do that. Uh, yeah, yeah, but that is they the, that, I mean, they always, the, the sitcom is always the guy's married and he's dumb and she's smart. He's a big stupid lug and she's hot. And for some reason, he doesn't make any fucking money yet. She's still married him. It's, it just constantly reminds you that you're watching a show. They wouldn't watch. They, Christina Applegate played like the ditzy blonde who was hot. That, that wouldn't go. Yeah, uh, I, think, definitely. I think that would go. There's still ditzy broads on TV. That's television. What about... Um, right? I mean... That... Sanford, Sanford, <laughs> Sanford and Son? Yeah, because it's all black people. It's not like... They, they don't like when it's intermixing the people and like, oh my God, you can't say that to him. Like, like, like J- J- Mr. Jefferson and Willis, that wouldn't be going on. Oh, with the white guy oh, upstairs? Saying, yeah, and he comes down like, Willie, you dumb honky. Yeah. You, you know, and, and then he's and, and making fun of him married to the black oh, dude, lady. Somebody gave you me know the, what I mean? Like, that wouldn't be on television. Somebody gave me the best, uh, one of the best Archie Bunker quotes I heard the other day. He goes, I go down to the airport, and those hairy Krishnas are down there banging on their tangerines there. <laughs> Harry Krishna is banging on their tangerines there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all of that shit. Like, I don't know. I don't know. A lot of a lot of the stuff you couldn't. But I, I think we got to wrap up because the other the other podcast coming in. We how much time have we done? We're yeah, good. Many time. Um, the best was Lamont was our driver. And I just kept thinking of Sanford and Son. Oh yeah. Like the best Sanford and Son ever, which they could never do, is whenever uh, they thought they saw Fred Sanford coming out of a gay bar. So then Lamont was scared. So then he went to get the gay bar. And then they saw Lamont coming out of the gay wow. bar. And it was all just like that freeze coming. Like, oh, you're gay. You're gay. You're not gay. Pop, I thought you were gay. Oh, Lamont, I thought you were gay. Yeah. <laughs> like, that was the best episode. <laughs> End of episode. <laughs> no, Grady was one um, of my favorites. Grady, like, you know, those guys were all stand-up comics. All yeah. the guys that were playing. And uh, Red Fox hooked all of them up. And they just were like... Uh, they were just all so seasoned. I just loved the, the the old school comics and stuff, how they could just take their time. Like like silence didn't scare them, and they just waited for that perfect and just bam, bam, bam. Everything's overhand right, overhand left with comics from back then. I felt like people would do. Wait, so the guy the guy who played Sanford's son was, is this, was a stand-up? No, 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 no. I think all of Fred's... Friends, I'm not sure about Grady, but all of those other guys, well, I forget okay. their names. And yeah, stuff. Lamont was a son. I think Lamont was an actor. Grady was definitely a stand-up. Grady was a comedian. And Aunt stuff. Esther was a stand-up. Oh, old God. school from she the Chitlin great. circuit. Oh, she was the best. <laughs> the Fred Sanford, you old, whatever the hell she would say. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't have him coming on talking about how ugly she was. Oh, no. Oh, and she... him faking a heart attack every week. Yeah. Every week, acting like he was going into cardiac arrest. You couldn't do that. I'm coming. I'm coming. But here's the thing. Everybody still thinks that shit's hilarious. It's just like corporate lawyers or whatever. That's what I'm going to say. Here's the thing, Paul. A- I don't run a TV network, and I don't look at analytics. And I'm saying that's what the fuck it is. Well, guys, this has been uh, <laughs> that's a perfect place to end. Episode 40. I want to thank our guest, the great Joe Bartnick. Joe, can't wait to see you when I'm in town. Please like and subscribe. Um, and get anything better everywhere you get podcasts like iTunes and Spotify. Please uh, continue to go to our merch shop, which we can't thank you guys enough for all the t-shirts and yeah, sweatshirts. Yeah, links are in the description. Which have been going. Uh, yeah, Bill's wearing it now. My Everybody uh, is taking pictures with the tie-dye ones, loving them. So thank you guys so much for that. Um, Thanksgiving weekend, guys. Only two days, Friday, Saturday, November 26th, 27th. I'll be in Bridgeport, Connecticut at the Stress Factory. Um, so you could get tickets for that. This weekend, I'll be at Skankfest in Houston. 
Houston, um, and I'm doing uh, something for the New York Comedy Festival, co-headlining with Brett Ernst. Me and Brett Ernst will be co-headlining New York Comedy Club on chains November out. 8th. Chains out. Chains the- out. <laughs> Yeah, chain, chains out. Uh, Brett said it's going to be the best smelling comedy show ever. So we're going heavy <laughs> cologne, heavy, uh, heavy chains. Uh, make sure you get, uh, obviously, tickets to Burr's tour anywhere you see. Joe, you got anything coming up people could come and see you at? Yeah, I mean, I'm doing the fourth wall Friday, the haha Saturday. I'm going to be... Uh... You know, come see me, man. I don't know. I, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be with Florentine and Jameson at a pre Thanksgiving spectacular in Bethlehem. Nice, nice. So check out uh, all the some AC DC play in that car ride. <laughs> Dude, Jim Florentine's uh, the, the 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 prank calls. I was listening to one the other day. He's talking to this oil uh, guy, and then, oh, what happens when you get a dry hole? Oh, I don't want a dry hole. I like a wet hole. And they go, oh well, yeah, we definitely get. Uh, and the guy kept going, oh. Last hole we dug. We got some oil. Dude, like that it. poor like guy when, wanted like to get, get off the phone with him. Remember that poor guy wanted to get off the phone with him? He said he only had a certain amount of time to live, and he tried selling stuff, and the guy didn't want to get off. He's like, yeah, I got a, uh, I got a stapler. You need a stapler? And the guy's like, he's like, no, nah, man, listen, dude. I really got to go. <laughs> How about a lamp? Got to get you a lamp. Or... He's like, listen, dude, I really got to go. Yeah, I know, but I, I got to get this. I got to get rid of this stuff. It's, it's brutal. <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> that is it, guys, for Anything Better, episode 40. We'll be back next week. Enjoy our picks. Hopefully we get the uh, Monday night special for you guys, which you guys have uh, we're already here. Talk to you guys soon. We are out of here. Thanks for having me, ladies. All right. We'll see you next week. Yeah, episode Paul. 41.